the human, the human response to threat is not always transcendence, uh, creativity, and leadership. It's most often uh, denial and regression. So that's one reason why you don't see the political will, is because we don't want to accept things are going to change as much as they're going to have to. There's also a question of capacity. Do we have the policy machinery, the policy capacity to deal with environmental problems? And, and the answer is maybe. Usually the policy people are given good marks if they resolve the conflicting interests. This is entirely different than solving the problem. The policy process is designed to resolve the conflicting interests. It's not designed to solve the problem. You hear policy people say all the time, if everybody is equally unhappy, I've done my job. That's stupid. If you've solved the problem, you've done your job. Making people unhappy is not the objective, even if it's equally distributed. In the Boreal Agreement, what we did is we took 21 big uh, forest companies, about 70% of the action in the Boreal, and nine environmental groups, and we sat them down and asked them to solve problems. We asked them to inform their discussions with science, but they weren't allowed to use the science as arguing points. Instead of using science to persuade, they had to use science to inform. So we, we, we basically shifted the paradigm of the role science plays in these discussions. A and really trying to problem solve instead of trying to interest win. You probably got to wonder, you know, is it really possible? And deep down inside, You've got to ask yourself that many times. And of course, you know the answer is, I don't know. But I do know, I do know for a fact that we are those humans who are self-interested, narrow-minded, regressive, hiding from problems, competitive, uh, uh, magical thinking, simplifi simplifying. And I do know for a fact that we are those humans who are capable of transcending problem solving, rising above our animal natures and finding solutions.